Chris, what's a crack? How are things? All good, sir. What's a crack? All good. Can't complain. How's lockdown treating you? Ah, like everybody else, you know, you just have to get on with it and take the guidance and just stay stay at home, as they say. But you know what? It's been good. It's been a quiet enough Christmas now, and you know, it's you know, there's been more family time and more time to enjoy time with your other half and just just chilling out and then just running and walks and stuff. And I never really done that before, so you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's what you know. It's easy to, to focus on the negative uh, sort of side of things, but there's actually been a lot of silver linings too. It's been obviously a time when we've been stressing out, obviously, but I've been I've been I've been the same boat, you know, having uh, time to appreciate things a wee bit more. But listen, you like since the start of last year, um, you have been, I suppose, one of the one of the stars of of 2020. You've kind of come out of nowhere in terms of you know the, the card business. I mean, me and you were. I suppose acquaintances before you know we knew each other in the creative space, and uh, all of a sudden, um, you know your your car business kind of takes off. And you know how how did you get started doing that? I think it's just what you say is there. You say what during lockdown, you had a bit of time to read and stuff. So I just had a bit of, bit of time to think creatively. Um, I was just uh, sitting there one day and realized that all my business stopped because I'm a graphic designer. I've been a graphic designer for over fifteen years now. And I worked for a lot of nightclubs, mainly, mainly the entertainment industry, like Chica Chica, nightclubs in Dublin and stuff and Galway, blah, blah. But all them retainers stopped because they've nothing to advertise. So all the creative content that I would have created for them businesses, you know, it all stopped. So I wasn't getting paid. <laughs> so uh, I basically had, I basically said to myself, let's turn this into a positive and take some time to work on your own kind of creative business. You know, very clever has kind of always been there, but it was just, I never took time to kind of market myself because it was just kind of, as you say, you know, market, you know, what people say about word of mouth is the most powerful thing in marketing. So I was just kind of doing graphics and digital content for all these different kind of businesses. But then lockdown happened, the first lockdown happened, and then all that stopped. So it just says, you know what, I'm going to put some time on the very clever. I'm a graphic designer, so how can I sell graphic design as a product? And I came up with the idea of the cards. And the, the first card I'd ever done, was the Dairy Guard Slunch a motherfucker one? Par- pardon my French. Curse away. One. This is pure dairy. If you can't curse on pure dairy, where can you curse? But I I was sitting watching Dairy Guards one day, and I'm a big fan of Dairy Guards. And then I was watching that actual episode where uh, Michelle drops a tray of shots and says that. I was that, you know what, I look good in the yard. And I was kind of doing like personalized prints and all that time. And it was just like, you know, the personalized prints, I wasn't really enjoying it. I'm really passionate about graphic design, and but I wasn't really enjoying the personalized stuff because if you go on Etsy and our websites and stuff, everybody's doing it. You know, yeah. I know different from everybody else and I always like to be different, even when I'm designing stuff, I always like to be different. So I went down the card route as uh, I realized that the, the, the made the snatch a motherfucker card and it- Don't you know, be cursing now. I don't- <laughs> you can just use a wee profanity. <laughs> I will. That card sold quite well. It still does sell quite well. And that kind of gave me the realization that I was on this on. So, you know, I started making cards, but related to obviously dairy. I know dairy has got such a unique sense of humor. And I just thought that, you know what, right, the right. dairy phrases and stuff would look great on cards. And it was all the cause last too, because lockdown, you know, this coronavirus, everybody's kind of. You know, a lot of people are feeling it and a lot of people are down the dump. So Absolutely. every card I'm making, when I go, every time I look at it, I go, will that make somebody smile? Yeah. You know, that's my complete focus when I'm making a card. Yeah, and and you know what, and it's 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 absolutely working. I mean, I I found twenty twenty a tough year to, to 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 get laughs for myself and um and you know other people. Thankfully, like yourself, have have stepped up that you know dramatically. Uh, the cards, I think the cards are absolutely fantastic. I mean, I mean, me and you've talked about this in private. You've kind of like um you've been able to sort of in a really high quality way like turn memes into. Uh, you know, like really high end memes into into a product. But the level of, of of design that you're doing or that is just way beyond anything I could do. And and I and I think it's been it's been one of the one of the things that I've watched with interest. Been amazing to watch. And right from those first few cards that you put on Instagram, right up to you know how it's grown and up to Christmas. So business has been good then. It, you know what? I'm, I'm, I was so surprised at how well it went um, because the growth of it's been tremendous. Like the the Facebook page. And the Instagram page just seems to be constantly, constantly, constantly growing. And the more it grows, you kind of feel more pressure to make more cards. And you, you, <laughs> then you think about the cards more. You're like, right, does that going to get engagement? Does that going to cause a bit of laughter? You know, you put yourself under more pressure because 
when I only made the, the Instagram page, as I said, because I was always doing Instagram and Facebook content for our businesses. I actually never, very clever, never had an Instagram page until May right. 2020, the first lockdown. So then I made an Instagram page and it's like 60 odd followers. So it was just throwing in a hangout. You know, you don't really care right. because you didn't have that much followers, but now you feel the pressure of it now. Well, I, you know, I, I can relate to that. I mean, when I started Pure Dairy, obviously I was about, well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 41 now. I was, but I think I was 20 years, 21, 21 years old. So it's 20, I think it's 20 years old now this, this year when you're just starting out. You, mm. you, you can just throw out and then you don't feel that pressure and now with a page being as big as it is you're like you start to double guess yourself you're like is that funny yeah. I don't know and what if a lot of people think it's the wrong way and you've got a responsibility what sort of career did you have before you kind of like what sort of jobs were you doing before I was always uh, I went to university and anyway, I studied uh, graphic design and digital content and stuff like that and got my degree and then basically that well, there was only a few modules of that degree that I'd done. It was based on design, but it's the, it's the modules that I enjoyed the most. And um, I was always in the music, so it was design and music was always the two things I was always interested in at university as well. So music production, anything to do with music and design. As you can see in the background there, I don't know if you can see it. There's a set of decks there. So I've been a DJ. I've been I've been DJing. Well, uh, I've been DJing over 15 years as well. So the whole design thing kind of happened then. Was what I was doing my own nights. I started designing my own posters. So when I was DJing in bars and there, I was doing my own posters. And it's hip hop kind of influenced posters. And because um, I'm a senior your work. So That's then it. the bars, the bars were coming to me and going, "Listen, did you do the post? You do, you do them posters?" And I says, "I." And he said, "Can you just start doing?" Uh, posters for us for nights because at, the, at this time on a, a university especially when I started DJing a bit more it's when Bebo was about so social media was kind of aging up. and then Facebook just kind of shoved Bebo down a hole so digital content was everything for businesses yeah. it, was, it was the timing was perfect and uh I put a lot of work on that i always 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 looking at what's new whether it's After Effects, Premiere Pro, Illustrator, Photoshop I'm always looking and always seeing what's known I'm always practicing on it so kind of the timing was perfect and all these businesses came to me well, at the, especially the bar industry and the entertainment industry and was like right can you do the menus for us so on design can you do posters for us Illustrator and Photoshop and so it was just kind of started balding clients and then word of mouth and it was just going great but the biggest one of the biggest compliments then was and I know I talked about pressure before. We very clever and feel great pressure, but I felt pressure with this a couple of years back when Stephen Porter from Chica Chica asked me to do the design work for Chica Chica, which sir, bringing the biggest DJs. Uh, in the like, and I was like, whoa, massive compliment, but I really yeah. need to do a lot of research here and not just throw a fucking template up and fucking start tracing around it with a graphics pen. I need to see what they want, but a market research. And uh, it's been going well so far. It's happening off uh, anyway. <laughs> well, uh, well Stephen's very supportive. I mean, and, and obviously their business has done fantastically well. I'm fortunate at the moment, the events business has been decimated, obviously, at the moment. So, uh, but, um, you know, I, I've seen your work. I, I remember you doing um, graphic design, seeing your graphic design pop up for um, some of your nights and some of your bits and pieces. And I know you did a wee bit of work for, uh, did you used to work for Chocolate? Is that right? Up in, in Ling, you Choc Chocolate Cogan was my first design job. Uh, I, I'd done as, um, basically I was a front end designer of his website and then I was a social media manager for him. Uh, and uh, that was my first, and that was probably, that's one of the most memorable things as well, because we won an award for our digital content and the, the how the, web, the website looked and how the website operated. So it was, it was only, out of university, not even a year. I was working for Dave and Chocolate, and we ended up won the award within a uh, won an award within a year. Based on wow. the stuff from, so right. a massive compliment. And I was like, you know All what, right. I'm gonna stick at this and just keep going with it, and you know, hopefully it doesn't get any harder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that's a that's an amazing range of clients that you're talking about already, right? From you know, Jika Jika chocolate, um, and you know, and you you kind of uh, you were saying you're working for people in um, in Galway and all the rest of it. Do you kind of like do do you have any aspirations that you know eventually like you obviously still enjoy doing the client work, but would you like to get to a position where you're very clever, your your own card business or your graphic design business has got the <laughs> sort of I think they over, that, they overtake that, and you'll be so you, you basically don't have to work for people, or is that you just love doing it anyway? Is what I'm trying I to ask. Doing, I, mean, I love seeing the uh, anything I create for somebody, I love seeing how it does. I know it's obviously good to get paid for what you do, but a big part of it for me is seeing if you've designed, like, especially when somebody new comes to you who you know was just throwing up anything on their Facebook page or Instagram, and then you start creating digital content for them, whether it be graphic design or motion graphics, and then you see. You know the complete transition from what they had before to the engagement it's getting now that's one of the big part of it for one of the big things for me you know it's great to see that i love that um 
and it's that the sound egotistical it's just also for local businesses i love doing it because you know these local businesses pay me to do something so it's good to give something back and get them what they're paying for um yeah. and you know there is just one of my places you know it's all support local like stephen porter is one of the, you know Stephen porter brings the biggest djs in the world they dare but he uses local photographers he uses he uses local graphic designers you know he yeah. uses lo- local security everything's local for stephen and that's yeah. not just stephen but a lot of people in their area like that you know so yeah you your best especially I- for local local businesses like when I was doing all the uh, the videos for Harp, I don't even know why I did like you know three and a half years with with Harp Blogger, um, and um, I used a complete dairy crew. So it was you know everybody from you know Paul Brown and Janice doing the sound, Liam uh, did the sound initially, and it was you know a lot of dairy cast um, er- editors, all the graphic design. So I was really passionate about the fact that I was able to tap into a, a wide range of. Um, of talent across dairy i had george hutton singing uh on on one of the christmas ones um and i think it's you know it's it's it was great it was a great feeling for me to be able to do that and obviously like yourself i suppose i can relate uh when when the pandemic came you know um harp uh, you know uh, to their credit um you know they kept us around for a few more months and uh paid us when they maybe didn't need to and then eventually they just says look guys we don't, you know, we can't, we don't feel like advertising at the moment. So I, uh, you know, at around May or in the same time as, um, well, yeah, about April, May, then I was, you know, out of work essentially. Um, so, so I think it was it was interesting to be looking at you starting your business and getting off and running. Um, and I, I was in the in the thing, and we're like, wait, well, I just lost my biggest client, and um, and I need to figure out what to do. Um, which is um is where um you know recently the. The idea for the pure dairy market has come from um and and i've it's something you, you've probably seen the videos online that i've i've put out there but um i have obviously been um would we say doing your head on about it for the last the last couple of weeks and uh we are hopefully delighted they, they say that uh, you're going to be joining the pure dairy market as well in the, in the next couple of weeks i think it's an amazing idea like because when you go on social media all you see like there's not one day it goes past where i see somebody rec- like looking for a recommendation of where to get this or where to get that yeah you know, and then that person has to go and search the person is that the right person is this the right business and stuff whereas i think like on the pure dairy market it's just one place with all local sellers and we all should be buying local anyway always yeah. try, always try and push support and local um yeah. just having everything under one roof then I need somebody. I, I want a frame for me. Well, I want personal stuff. I want very clever cards. I want wax wax melts. It's all in the one place. Like, yeah, great idea. And, that's, and, that, and that's that's the idea, you know. So so we're you know working working on that at the moment, getting that ready. Um, it's been it's been actually you know even before Christmas, I was like, oh, yeah, I've kind of got it kind of. The, the most of it pulled together and then when you start getting under that credit it's like you've got legal stuff you've got all the you know the user yeah. guides for how you add stuff and shipping yeah. and all ends out so you're like mm, this is a massive job and they're, like, and they're gonna need more people and more whatever but it's a great project and it's i think from my point of view what i what i love about it is that um there's two projects i'm involved in one one is the lab fund and, and the pure day market at the bottom but um no one's private once once one's not for profit but they yeah. both hopefully are for the benefit of the city and they're both to the benefit of people and hopefully through this podcast and this is our first episode um i will be able to speak to people who are you know either sellers on the market people who have started their own businesses uh people who are ready run their own businesses and i'm signed up for lab and and anybody else as well so it's i i feel really passionate about the fact now that i have a platform that can kind of an ecosystem Whereby I can now talk to really great people like yourself, but uh, and 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 people who have done uh, amazing stuff, and your stuff has been amazing. It's been one of the highlights for me of, of twenty twenty, to be honest. There's Mister Hume, Mister Hume on the wall there. Uh, I appreciate that too. Uh, one, of, one of yours. Uh, well, we haven't. I mean, what we should really do though is get under the under the cards. I mean, you've done. I mean, how many cards? You allowed you with a swear on them and stuff, though. You allowed hey. you to wear them out. <laughs> uh, uh, I will not, I'll, I'll bleep out the swear don't worry um, you, you, how many cards have you done Chris you've done loads I was on your Instagram earlier today and you've done like you're just relentless at putting them out how many are you doing or how many are you doing per week and it's I try just... to, to be honest I try to get I try to design about five a week I think me wow. is about 202 products I think it is wow like data of them are cards but hey there's you, you might think that's loads but there's people who like there's the old person who messages me going, No, I don't see anything of fancy here. So that's why I'm getting but that again kind of influences me. I keep going. You know, I need to make more cards, you know. Maybe I'm not hitting enough new home cards, maybe I'm not hitting enough engagement cards. You know, with the manner that's full throttle, we we Valentine's Day cards as you can see on there, but 
you know, Mel or Haas is the minority because you completely neglected birthday cards for the last two weeks. You need to get on the ball. So, you know, you kind of just kind of get obsessed with one kind of, you know, one uh, special occasion. So it's sometimes it's hard to think, you know, you can go on with Valentine's cards for ages, like, because there's that, you know, Valentine's Day, dare I, dare I phrases with Valentine's. I'm sure you can think of a couple, like, uh, uh, but, you know, when it comes to birthdays, you do kind of struggle to think of stuff at times. So you need to uh, really sit. And that's where the time management comes in there because I'm always flat out making cards, which takes a lot of time. But you also have to take time to sit and go, right, a lot of research here. I need to work out what cards I'm doing this week and what am I doing them on, what theme, uh, what's the talking point in Derry, uh, what's going on in Derry, what's going on on WhatsApp and everybody's WhatsApp group. Because you're trying to relate it to everybody, you know, not just a certain age group. You're trying to relate it to everybody as well. Uh, and do you have like do you have then like pillars of of sort of uh, content that you look at? Do you say like right because there's obviously it's people's birthday you know all year round. So if you were doing five cards a week, do you say like right I'll do one birthday card. I'll look at what's upcoming up next. What's Valentine's Day next? Uh, they'll look at what's current. You know when you uh, it's almost very similar to how you know uh, me and you both do this running social media for clients where you're looking at what's current. You know what's coming up and then what's in the news. What's yeah. general? What's general all the time? Um, you know what's uh, and what 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 will be funny like right now this second, and what will be funny at any time? That's it. That's ex exactly what you say. Like it's 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 basically what's going on at the time. That's where I kind of take my my inspiration from as well. You know, but then there's times there's nothing going on. Right. <laughs> there's not happening. So you just kind of have to do a bit more research because there's days I'd be sitting for when I do take the time to think of cards, I'd be sitting for two hours and I just have. You know, I've got half an idea of a card, but then I'm scrolling through Facebook and I'm seeing everybody talking about this one popular thing that's going on at the minute. I'm just going, boom, happy days, sorted. Yeah. You know, it's easy as that. It's some, it's just, it's strange how it works sometimes. But I you know in this game, I think you just have to constantly put out new cards all the time. Do you do you do you soundboard anybody for your ideas? Do you like show them to your girlfriend or your family, or how do you or do you just know yourself? Right, I'm happy with that. Or do you have anybody that you kind of like? Bounce it off me. It's going to an objective idea yeah, because let's be honest, if you're sitting working on someone, you obviously are going to be a bit biased because it's your own work. So it's always good to get an objective opinion. So sometimes I would send them on the uh, admit demands or, you know, because my cards are about edgy as well. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I would send it on to somebody and go, is that too much? And they would say, no, I think that's good. Or no, that's that's about too much there, Chris. You're just, you're, you're, nah, <laughs> you're you, too you, far. So, you, so. Stepped, you stepped over the line. But I think that's what's really interesting. I mean, that's where me and you, me and you obviously have um, sort of similar kind of uh, take on things where we've, um, you know, for a number of years, I've obviously been doing memes and writing stories and Saturdays and stuff. Not, not so much the last year or so, but uh, it's it's a very similar thing because you're constantly observing what's going on in the world. What can I make funny? What's funny about that? What's funny about this? Am I going to do that? And it's really interesting because I think um, part of the I think part of the um, attraction of trying to use humor is that you can push it enough to the point where it's it's either going to be funny or it's not. And if I mean, and I I am sometimes I kind of like. The, the the fear of the unknown. So sometimes I like to the show with the people, yeah, and get an and get an objective viewpoint. But um, but sometimes I think I can show it to someone, and humor is subjective. So if you show somebody, like, well, I don't know about that, it puts you off. And you go, oh, I thought that was funny, and then you don't go with it. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, I've gone, hey, you know what, I'm going to go for it, and I put it up, and then it does really well. And you're like, I knew you should have went with it, knew you should have trusted uh, my gut. So that's and that's like, I, I love, I love Derry, really, but you know, as I say, I'm always always saying support local, and I just love Derry. I love seeing people do well in Derry. I love everything about Derry, as, as I'm always saying, because I think it's just one of them places. It's, the only time Derry people are looking down at somebody is when they're helping somebody up. Yeah. And the yeah. last thing that I want to do with any of my cards is offend people, especially the people yeah. that I love the last thing i want to do so there is a bit of you know you, when you get this certain amount of followers as well on instagram and facebook you know there's a there is a bit of you know you have to sit and think you know is that too much or we'll just go fucking full throttle <laughs> just, just, just go for it what i've kind of learned is that as long as you're laughing with and not laughing yeah. at that's that's part of the joke you've, you've obviously you've like you've you've featured some really famous people on your on on your stuff um has has any of them interacted with you um has anyone sort oh, of got okay. involved i'll just because a lot of people ask me that so i'll just answer for everybody now see the dairy yards of people on them if they're close to home like mickey Dory, vance and sweeney uh antonio from color me beautiful i've asked every one of their permission i'm not just going out and slagging them at the back at home and not getting their permission <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean the people up there. I see the funny side of everything, and it's they've all yeah. been good sports. Like Bunny Sweeney could have turned around to me and says, No chance. We all know that Bunny Seen Sweeney situation when our personal trainer was a massive talking point on WhatsApp. Yeah, so I can yeah. says, You know what? 
that's what's going on at the minute. Let's see if we can work with this. So I got in touch with Bunny on Instagram. I don't know the man, I just know him free like just because I follow him on Instagram. And he goes, I know you are, your cards are great and stuff, blah blah. But I go ahead. But I, I did say, well, let me see it before you put it up. So and he was a good sport, you know, and it's the same way Antonio from Cormac. Mickey Dorda as well, and our guy, he was he was well for it. Um it's a compliment, I think, for a lot of people too. You know, it's you know, people people like if you're in any way sort of well known in dairy, uh, you know, it's almost like getting on the Simpsons now. If you got a very clever card. Funny you're talking about the about the Bunny Sweeney thing. Um, I posted a joke on Pure Dairy where I suggested that we would do uh, they could play Street Fighter Two on um on Twitch, um, and we would do it for charity for for a bit of crack. I get messages sometimes that uh, people ask for personalized cards to be made. And some guy messaged me, he was a personal trainer as well, and he says, can you make a street fighter card based on that situation? <laughs> so There you go, mate. He just stole my joke. You've, you've actually had one more that you haven't spoken about, actually, but a big one. I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it, which is obviously uh, uh, Mr. Phil, Phil Coulter. Mm. Well, Tell the thing with Phil Coulter is, as I said, when it's closer to home, I'll ask people's permission, but somebody like Phil Coulter is a big shot. He's a big deal. Like, so I didn't ask for his permission, being honest. Uh, uh, um, and it's an illustration. Yeah. Exactly, a picture of them, like so. It's an illustrative picture. But uh, I was sitting watching the football scores one day, and my phone pinged, and I realized it was. And the card says, the full quote, the card says, if anybody hasn't seen it, it says, I hope you're feeling better. And it's yeah. a full quote in the town I love so well. And it's an illustration of full quote. And uh, so I got a ping on my phone, and this boy bought a uh, £125 worth of feeling better cards, <laughs> the full quote cards. I was like, Jesus, this boy must know my son about the sick people. <laughs> <laughs> went under the, the name and went on the address that was Phil Coulter. So I was like, no way. And then my phone pinged again and I got an email from him. It says, hey, Chris, uh, just have a look at your work. It's great. Um, your creativity for your cards is something that's caught my eye. And uh, can I deal with, you, deal with you directly going forward for cards that I need done? So I was like, oh, my God. Like, and I says, no bother. Uh, happy days. Uh, and then I brass necked him. Sent me a wee video clip back, and he sent it back, and I don't know about it at the moment. So, uh, so you asked him to do a video clip? Well, after he bought all the cards, I says, "Listen, uh, you know, I sent I sent him a wreck of free stuff as well." And then he says, "Can we do a deal that we can work with each other going forward for cards?" And I says, "Of course." I says, uh, "Well, let's start this deal off." But you sent me a video. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah, that's brass neck and it all right. But you know what? Phil's, Phil's all right, actually. I have a mutual friend um, with Phil, um, George Hutton, who I mentioned already, George Hutton, the, the, the singer. And George and me had a conversation, and I said to George, hey, Phil, come on down. This was way last year when I was thinking about doing a podcast. And George like, all right, Phil, be up for it. No bother. He'll come on. So so um, I've just sent a message out, actually, and I'm waiting to hear back now. So I'm hoping that, um, that Phil will come on. So he'll just come on with his piano and just sing. I'll just sit and watch. Yeah, uh, yes, one of them people the local people do better because I was I got obviously got chatting them a bit more and I told them listen my business been affected and I'm trying out the my own business now selling an actual product and he was all for it like it was at Christmas time I sent them and that's the thing anytime I make a, a card featuring an individual that does quite well you know I'll make an art card a lot for different special occasions so like Jerry Adams made a Jerry Adams birthday card so I made a Jerry Adams Christmas card, made a Jerry Adams Valentine's Day card, and it was the same for Phil. So at Christmas time, I ordered a wreck of Phil Coulter Christmas cards to send out to all his muckers. <laughs> <laughs> it must be brilliant to be that to be that well known and that and that famous that you can just send out yourself on a card and just like without any sense of irony. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, you you definitely have um, have captured people's uh, attention and imagination. I think this 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 year, Chris. And have you any personal favourites yourself? Like I know you talked about the 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 dairy girls uh, slancha motherfucker, but like out of your kind of back catalog, maybe we can look through a few actually if you don't mind. Um, so this is a this is a first communion card, is it? Much you get, lads. Right. That's that, that's something that happened to me, and I'll never forget it. Is when I made my first yeah. communion down the White uh, Chapel to get you. I remember my mate walking over to me, and it was like slow motion. He was wearing his wee sitting on, but both of us were standing there as if we were two guys in a Miami Vice thinking we were dead cool. And he, the first thing he says to me when he came over was, what you get, lad? You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's one of the things I remember from years ago. So it's definitely one of the, uh, And that card's been very popular. Like it, uh, What stands out to me about that card as well is that was one of my first kind of cards as well when I didn't have that many followers and stuff on uh, all the likes of Instagram. Uh, Joanna Cooper, the ASOS model from Derry, ordered that card and put it in her story. I was just sitting there one day and I didn't look at my phone. I went on my phone, like 200 followers within an hour. <laughs> she put it in her story and she got me loads of followers again. It just, uh, it, it, it's more, it just shows you again that Derry people 
you know, uh, class. Like, like, are. So, see, that's one of the reasons why that stands out for me as well. Thanks, you know, what else we got, Nick? Uh, uh, <laughs> we're now announcing how shite 2020 was at 8 p.m. Uh, or we're announcing how shite 2020 uh, was at 8 p.m. Stay tuned. Oh, Mickey, brilliant. Uh, well, that's obviously because, like, you know, in lockdown, like, there's not one Tom, Dick, or Harry and Derry who wasn't on Facebook Live looking to see if they won a new game. <laughs> Vogue, like. So uh, that was one of the situations uh, where I went. I need to do something on that. And Mickey, good sport as well. Obviously got uh, him and he was well forward. Like. Oh, very good. Uh there we go. The man himself. This is the one. Uh, the Christmas card found Pat himself. Yeah. We have a wee story to tell about about this one, but we'll come back to it. We'll come back to the, the way this card is is important in a, in a second. Later in a second. Uh, there you go. That's the one you're chatting about. Hope you're feeling better. Uh, oh get well soon. This thing. They're it's actually, man, it's actually quite sad when I made that card. You know, because I was sitting making it, and all I was reading that week was when COVID was really, really bad in Derry. Like it was. I know it's bad. Obviously, it's bad anyway. But the COVID rates were so, so high in Derry, and I always mm. hear was such and such as in hospital, such and such as COVID. So it was quite sad making that card, even yeah. though it's supposed to be kind of positive and lighthearted and funny. But you know, but I, that all stuck out for me because. For the simple reason that you know, at the time I say I was sad making it, but then when Phil Calder messaged me, I was like a Wayne at a One Direction concert when I opened up the email. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, brilliant. Uh, well, there's um, uh, you're a fucking melter. This is like a like a, a collaboration with uh, Jenna yeah. from the Wayne Sense. I have, like as I say, like I I see that like, anybody that features on a card, I see that as a collaboration. Whether it's Antonio from Calling Me Beautiful or Vanny Sweeney or Mickey yeah. Doherty, and this is another one. Uh, it was just a wee bit different this time. So every girl in Derry loves wax melts, as you know. Not just necessarily here, but wax melts in Derry just seem to be a massive thing. And they are. They are. She, she is. Uh, she's an our local business who's doing yeah. really, really well. And every time you're going on Instagram stories, you know people are tagging Divine Sense and to tag of wax or wax melts, and you know she's always thinking ahead. You know she's doing like. She's going down the health kind of right now with her healthy soaps and stuff, and you know it's great to see. And I just, it was just a simple message again. Yeah, but, stuff, stuff's great. We actually, um, we funded her through the lab fund to access uh, the last funding round. Um, yeah. so we helped her with getting her, her unit and stuff. She put an application, and she was one of the, she was the, the standout application. I think that round, and it's just such a, it's such a great brand, but it's such a pure dairy brand as well. Looks divine, like the, the surname Divine Sense. It works so well. Yeah. Uh, so you know that's that's a brilliant collaboration. Good sport. She was all for it. So we go, what's uh, up next? Father Ted. Why Father Ted? Father Ted is... Why, I mean, uh, why not? But when, uh, um, It's my favourite show ever, to be honest, you know, and it's just from family time. You know, every time I watch an episode of Father Ted, I always remember when I first watched that with my parents. And I have a big family. There's nine people in my family. And we still shove on the living room when Father Ted was on. Uh, and oh, it's just uh, it's so so good, and uh, it's just so funny as well because people ask me what what's your two kind of favorite things? I'd be like Cup Hop and Far Ted. They're complete opposite, you know. They're completely different. <laughs> so, uh, Far Ted uh, is uh, my favorite show ever. So I carry obviously stands out for me. It's, uh, your birthday money, rest of yeah, my life. Always my said before. Always my cards, you know. For different occasions and i was sitting the other day going why did i not make a christmas version of that you could just do one for different occasions i mean that's the the default uh giving money to people funny like th and this is this is paying you a compliment actually you gave me um up come up the christmas a christmas bumper pack of christmas cards um as a, as a thank you for for helping you out on a project and uh i gave all the big wains in the house uh, a, a very clever christmas card and stuck a few pound on them and honestly they were more taken with the fact that they got very clever christmas cards than they were necessarily with the money they were like oh i love a card a card's brilliant and i said well what about well, well, here stuff like that, to be honest ah. you, what does it, and it, like, even, even when you get tagged on instagram and stuff with your card sitting in somebody's fireplace you know uh, what i mean Happy birthday, uh, Call Moore in the streets, Gallia in the sheets, dirty Brits. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know what I actually laughed harder at? So when I when I stuck out on Instagram, I was like, I always think of kind of like a wee quirky description they put up with the with the HQR to put up. But the wee description was, "Mind you, they find these pillows. Sorry, mind you, they find these books under your ma's pillows." <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of where it comes from. I remember being in like my friend's house was away, and he used to like be playing about. Stairs used to run under the mushroom. You see, always be pile of wee romantic books. Uh, so uh, I just kind of put it there. I spun on it. There. The mills and boons. I, I recently moved to Colmore, and I've got on like really well with all the neighbours. So anytime it's one of their birthdays, now that's what they get. Cards are going really well. Hey, you moved to Colmore already? 
Oh, jeez, no, it's a shit part. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up next? Oh, I love this one. Uh, are you in a rah? Because you make me weak at the knees. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? It's so funny. Like the, the, uh, somebody who is quite kind of smart when it comes to online things and what you should be putting online and what you should be putting online uh, actually rang me as soon as I posted that. And I said, Chris, get that down. You know, get that down. You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, be putting that up and stuff. And I actually did take it down for a while. But then, like a couple of weeks later, people were screenshotting me because that's what I always think. So, you know, it's a good part of marketing too. When people are screenshotting your stuff and putting it in their WhatsApp group. So people yeah. were coming back to me, even though they removed the post and sent me a picture of it. You know, I seen this card a couple of weeks ago where my mate sent me this card. So then I just can't, you know what? I need to start, I want to start selling that. So it's uh, been going very well. Again, no. it's not taken too seriously. It's just about a crack. Yeah, but it's it's just about just a crack. Like the, I made a Valentine's Day version of it there the other day. Oh, hold, hold that right up, Bert. Oh, it's just a bit more girly looking for you. Ah, uh, the, the girly version of it. Very <laughs> good. Very good. No, yeah. I love that. And because uh, I did a, I, we did, I mean, I, we did it years ago. We did the Republican action against Mugs Cup. And I had similar, like, I was trying to get it into a couple of the shops up a town. And people were yeah. going, Oh, you didn't watch yourself. That even my mom was, Oh, you can you didn't watch yourself. That was a ways up. It's a little bit of crack. Like, what are they going to be doing? Yeah. I'm doing kneecap because I'm selling cups. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. That's the thing. And, I, and I hide most of these cards. I hide them from my parents. Like, and then I had a pop up shop at Christmas time in Braun. And my dad was like, Oh, we'll come up. And my dad walked in. And he was just like, you know, <laughs> what's going on here? You know, I don't know if you were doing this. Like, so I, uh, but you know, it's just a new generation now. It's just that's just about. Ah, uh, it's a especially so there's, there's no rally anymore. Anyway. They'd have to they'd have to break uh, the ceasefire now to come and get you. So, uh, and there we go. There's the one ourselves. The one thing we're talking about. So this is the first very clever card to launch a motherfucker. Was um, that the, uh, uh, wow. at the time was a big thing, yeah. obviously, yeah. and I'm a massive fan of Derry Gears. And uh, I just I just thought that would be look good in the yard. And I was doing like personal stuff so at the time. I wasn't enjoying it, but see, as soon as I made that and I started calling on the wee glass and stuff, I was like, I, I uh, like, like uh, you can really see the progress. You can see the progression, obviously, in your work. That was a very sort of uh, simple sort of like it almost looks like um, what do you call the, the board game, the the yard, uh, one of the black. I'm like cards it's very 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 stylish very nice but you know you've kind of you've taken it to the next level now you your 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 illustrations going right up the uh yeah, you know, but they definitely have gotten better like the, the, there's if you go back there's different styles of cards you know you'll have the olden day ones where like i'm really like a victorian woman standing there being all yeah. time birthday, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> you know it's kind of and they're kind of like lighthearted lighthearted no but it's it's, it's I kind of when you're on this game, you kind of realize what's it's, uh, you obviously looking at your analytics, you can you can see what sells more. And believe yeah. it or not, it's the rude cards that sell the most, you know. Yeah. And try yeah. to put it out between both, but it is the rude cards that sell both, you dirty brutes. Despicable, it's disgraceful. What's up next? Uh, I can neither confirm that or den the deny that it's your birth birthday to Chucky Arla. So even on like pure dairy, also fry, we must have used the the Jerry Adams confirming and denying and saying they haven't gone away, you know, and about a uh, hundred different memes that it never gets old. One of them things, it's like, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's always going to be funny. You know, it's never going to get old. I can neither confirm nor deny. You know, like I made a Valentine's Day one. I can neither neither, neither confirm or deny that I'm your secret admirer. You know, it's it's always going to be funny. It's like it's like a, a lot of my card says DEI, and that's always going to be funny. You know, I made a, a pretty woman card there the other day. The pretty woman phone, you know, the famous scene where she goes into the shop, do work in commission, big mistake. So, I made a card on that day already. I changed it to white woman, and the, the speech bubble says, Do you work in commission? D, uh, DEI, and it's just <laughs> you know, uh, it's always going to be funny. There's we certain things uh, that's be funny, like I know for a fact that card there, I'll make a, I'll make a version for every occasion for it. Well, it's yeah, for yeah. Or, you know, and, and people and people will buy them because it'll be funny. It'll be funny till the end of time. Yeah, um, and it's like the Leonardo DiCaprio meme as well. It'll always be funny. You know, I made cards with a Leo meme and all on it. There's just certain things that's always yeah, funny. It's like I, so funny, but it is. The Leonardo DiCaprio meme now is so funny still that it's got so meta. I love it when a meme becomes like it just becomes self perpetuating. I actually yeah. did a meme. I haven't I haven't posted it anywhere. I might post it after this for a bit of cracker. I made it way back, but it's like um it basically says you know at the top like um you know uh, uh getting a wee bit sick. Uh, you know I think you're up in the air so that Leonardo DiCaprio meme and then Leo's on the meme going. <laughs> and then he's in the so meme. It's not funny anymore. He's in it. It's still fucking funny. Uh, right. It's just it's, it'll never not be funny. The Leonardo like DiCaprio I made meme. Christmas card of it. Uh... And it's it's just hum when he's driving, which he's drunk driving, like he's got his wee glass. Oh, I, 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 double fair 
driving home for Christmas, <laughs> like I'm double fair mucks, you know, it's uh, oh, amazing. Uh, I I think I did I give that to somebody. I mean, I I kept a couple. Uh, so there'll be a few, few, few uh, fairly clever cards for next year. Still gonna. Uh, people, so they will thought around that one was taxi man because there's so many taxi men in there. I was like, I need to get a card made here for taxi man. So that was kind of the idea around that yeah. as well. I'm, I'm trying to get as much done as I can, just kind of to suit the all age groups. Like so, it was like Daniel Donnell ones there and Jamie Dornan from the fall, um, Father Ted. Um, and I've kind of branched out the like football ones and stuff, like Jurgen Klopp and Roy Keane and James McLean and stuff as well. I think this is the last one. We've already spoke about it, but it's one of my favourites. This is <laughs> Have a Pamademic Christmas. <laughs> that was a video where he kept saying Pamademic. Um, no, it was a good sport. You know, it, it was, was all over. I said it, and that's uh, when you asked, that, you know, what was your kind of, do you know what works and what doesn't work? When would you send it to somebody to get a second opinion on it? Well, that there one, as soon as it was done, that was like. There's no need to send that to anybody because that's a one They can't all be one but that definitely was a one Like, just afraid that he sees me and he batters me because I haven't seen him since. He'd <laughs> <laughs> be looking paid. He'd be looking for his commission off all um, 99, 99s you've, you've sold them for. Chris, has anybody ever got um, like upset? I mean, obviously, we've talked about you know people going being good sports and Bunny and Pat and everybody, but has anybody ever got a wee bit upset with stuff? No, although, as I say, most people will be good sports about it, but uh, well, there was one person in particular who didn't see the funny side, and they asked for it to be taken, taken down, and I took it down. And you took and it down? Took it down, yeah. took it off social media, uh, put them all on the fire, free petrol over them, and put them on fire, just get rid of the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even keep them to give away to people on the sleigh. Uh, I used to no, no, them out no, there. No, uh, the reason, like, as, as, as I say, like I always ask for permission, but with that one, it wasn't. He could. He could argue that it wasn't on about that person. So that was. But it was at the same time. It was like McDowell's and McDonald's, you know, <laughs> from coming to America. So uh, I just. I. That's that type. People might not have the same sense of humor. People might not see the funny side yet. But yeah. um, uh, I, yeah, that, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't get permission for that one because I didn't feel that I needed permission for that one because I, I, I didn't have a picture of the person on it and it didn't mention the person's name or anything so um well i mean at least at least you you did the right thing and as what, what seems the right thing is you, you took it down and um you know no no ah, harm as no, as no as foil as i said before like it's i love dairy and the last thing i want to do is offend anybody from yeah. it especially like so you know with that car in particular it was just again it was just to cause a couple of lols but this person obviously didn't see the funny side of it which is fair enough but, ah, it happens. It's gonna. It is gonna happen. I mean, Valentine's Day is coming up. I don't want to go through the whole range of Valentine's Day cards. Um, but you've, you've a couple of highlights on there. You've mentioned obviously, uh, McLean Madabuji is one of your one of your uh your, your your ones. Um, James is kind of in the same league as I suppose as, as Phil Coulter, where he's so big. Um, did you have yeah. to ask permission with James? Well, don't get me wrong. I've messaged him on Instagram. Uh, Brad Nakin maybe doing so on uh, a message on a while back actually about putting the space in the yard but it was a bit more edgy the yard I was thinking about but this car was uh, you know it's quite light-hearted it's it's I'm a clean mad about you um, it's a play a bit of wordplay and it's, uh, a it's, a, it's and easy don't think I would have had it if they, if they messaged me and tell me I take it down I would but his wife shared it in her story so I'm sure it's grand <laughs> I got a wee bit of a um bit of a disagreement with, with James years ago, many years ago when he was just starting his career. Um, I wrote a Dear Magella article on Pure Dairy and um, it was just a silly story about, um, there was a rumour going around that he was going to buy the box he done and um, it was basically his ma just getting uh, no upset. He's like, I'm not. I don't want to leave Craig, and I want to stay. No, I'm not. I'm not going to move into the bog. And it was just a. It was just a side joke about you know, um, you know, Craig and Fran Craig. A woman doesn't want to move to the bog because she's she's Craig and through and through. It must be tough to come under the spotlight and actually become a star and then see your name being used. And he's come come through a long a long process understanding that. And um, there was never any intent, harm um, meant with that. But a very 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 generous guy, James, and I've done a lot for oh, silly. You know, he does a lot for Derry and he's he's a top man, like and and I think what you said there when people do get to that level of kind of you know stardom, yeah, you know, there's a yeah. lot of responsibility. You have to have you have to take responsibility for things like if you know, I if, he, if I message someone ask could I make a card and I'd done a card that maybe was about too much, you know, he would get involved because he gave me permission. Like yeah. I was with uh Shane Duffy a couple of months back and I said to him, uh, can I do something with you going forward? Well or be a card or you know, a funny video of some sort and he says I but you know, James. Uh, sorry, Shane Duffy plays for Celtic, obviously. So he's a wee bit worried because he knows my cards are about edgy, and which you know, 
am I going to talk about Celtic and Rangers and stuff? You know, I obviously doesn't want stuff like that. You know, you just have to sit. Yeah. And, you know, you can understand where these people come from when they, they, they you know, they be a bit, bit cautious about you know collaborating with, especially people who are kind of creative and edgy. Because you know what? Yeah, I, I know that more than most. Don't worry. But I, I mean, I think it's it's finding that balance of trying to be not be. Um, uh, condescending, not be not be hateful. Um, I mean, I did one of the piece of content I did um, a few years ago was uh, if do you remember this? Remember when remember when Alicia ran for MP? Alicia McKellian's um, uh, picture was on all the lampposts around the city. It was everywhere. It was just her smiling. And I did uh, I did um, a wee piece, and it was only about a crack called uh, the Mona Lisa, which was like which was Leonardo uh, the Da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa. Yeah. And then obviously she invited me to London for a thing. And you always have that kind of awkward, like oh, I set you up on a on a funny thing, and 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 that's where I I've learned that as long as you're fair and as long as you are do, and you're not being hateful or hurtful, and it's just being done in a in a in a very uh, light-hearted way, then it's all good. I kind of support mental health charities as well. Like I'll, I would donate money, they'd mental health charities, and you know I would look like a proper dick if I was thinking oh, like people message me about doing a you know a Lisa McKellen card after that whole thing happened. You know, like, uh, I mean, well, I'm not going to do that. Like, that's why I was switching can't be hateful. Either. No, it's, 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 can't just, be hateful you know, it's only when people would read it and see the funny side of it, but I would never go down the route of just being hateful. You know, it's, no, people do no. message me quite a bit on Instagram saying you should do a card and this, or you should do a card and that. And people say to me sometimes, you know, you haven't got enough cards to suit, you know, Protestants and you haven't got enough cards to support to suit Catholics. And I'm just like, it's not about Protestants and Catholics at all. You know, the cards are it's not about that it's about creating laughs as one community yeah. i mean you're talking about very similar things though especially with the ulcer fry um you know where uh, it's 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 very much cross community we we focused on what unites us rather than what divides us and it's a really hard uh, balancing act to get right and and that's it's, it has to be the something that everybody can laugh at don't slag off the way somebody looks and don't slag off anybody who's passed away no no, exactly. Nice. Mistakes will happen. Mistakes will happen, you know, and, and you will sometimes cross a line, um, you know, um, not realizing. And it's it, it just comes down to how you respond to it, ultimately, if you do make a mistake. Chris, the other thing that um, we haven't talked about is, and it's been a really uh, good sort of area for you this year, has been your funny videos. Um, you've done, you know, you've done a couple of videos. Um, the, the, the Liam Coyle one, where Liam Coyle appeared on it, uh, outside it. Um, and then you did the the Pat Ramsey video for uh, Love Actually. Um, you've obviously is that something you plan to kind of keep going through next throughout this year? I keep saying next year, this year. Yeah, well, I think that um, somebody who, like you know yourself as somebody who's a creative marketer yourself. I think when you're when you're trying to sell someone, you know, especially like someone like I'm selling, it's got the humor and the cards and stuff. Um, you kind of have to be a bit more creative with your marketing instead of just uploading a picture of a card all the time. You know, we have to mix it up a bit more by motion graphics, graphic design, or as you said, videos. And uh, and you know yourself, Kieran, you know, Facebook's pushing everybody to use video, but I think they're saying in by 2023 or so on that Facebook will be a video platform. Yeah. You know, people's, people's attention is more drawn towards videos than anything. So I think it's just uh it's just an our way of marketing. Uh but in saying that, I fucking love doing it. It's so much crack yeah. doing it. You, you give me a uh just not for well, you. that's that's what I was yeah. that's what I was building up to is the fact that the Pat Ramsey videos had had uh, over a million views now, um, and I kind of was involved behind the scenes because me and you were talking uh, sort of that week when we were building uh, when you were filming it, and I came along and filmed did a wee bit of directing, um, added a few bits and pieces thing, and it was a brilliant. That was a great collaboration. Uh, we got to sit in Pat's house, get cups uh, of tea, <laughs> cups of tea off Chris and Pat and uh, chatting. About there, it was great. Eh? It's got some crack, uh, brilliant, crack. brilliant crack. Eh? It's one of them cards. Uh, as I said, if you had it, always be there. Here we go. There's a leg, right? Come here. It's called Pat Ramsey. It's just he's well for them, and it's always going to be put on then our special occasion. So we have a Pat Ramsey Valentine's Day card now. It says, Are you Pat Ramsey? Because I was lost before I found you, you know. See, that's another. That's another one of those jokes that um that um that has is just absolutely timeless, like Pat Pat Ramsey content. Well, we watch the video quickly. Hold on a second. I think we'll watch well, it. I haven't seen it uh, since Christmas time. Right. So. I, I don't know his, his wife's name is Chris. So when she, when he says opens the door and says her name, I, I was thinking, well, people think that's a mistake. Hey, Essex. Chris, it's a TV license, man. <laughs> Tell me don't have a TV. <laughs> Classic. Oscar Wallen. Oh, that's all. 
Right, and we got that. We got, we brought all that lighting set up. We don't even need it. It was great. I know this is the thing too. Like, um, we, like a lot of people who have their own kind of business Facebook page and want to do videos. No, as you know yourself, here in that day, like that video was nearly over a million views, and we only used a gimbal phone camera. Right. And then obviously we had the editor, which was the tough part. Like, but you know, it's it's a lot easier than people think to make videos. So it's harder to think of the idea, it's harder to, to edit, but actually doing the value, you know, you don't need a lot these days because the technology's gotten that good. No, exactly. I mean, I I was just using a big crew, obviously, and, and um, you know, we did, you know, way better, uh, you know, type of per, what you would see as production and the, the results on, on, on this and, the, and visually and, and stats wise is amazing, like, you know, so you don't need, you don't need a big setup to do it. Uh, well, I think I've got a few of them. Right there. Enough's enough. Who is your? Who's your? Stop messaging Pat and leave and stop a drawers. Oh, I cringe hearing my own voice back to you. Yeah, hey, I'll cringe back to you. Know, I hate my own voice. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. Hey, all the Union Jacks over that radio too. Nobody get on there with that. <laughs> uh, Pat. Pat putting her feet up. So that, there we go. That was the that was the Christmas um, the Christmas video. I done a wee bit of work with Pat before. Pat had appeared in um, one of the Ulster Fry videos with Harp as well too. He's a brilliant he's a brilliant sport. Um, but hey, um, I say over a million views, unbelievable. Metal, um, metal. absolutely class. I mean, when, like, when I've been doing these wee videos, you know, I, I knew that they would get you know some engagement, but I didn't think it would be. Over a million views. That's metal. That's metal. Because I was seeing people from Sweden and Afghanistan and stuff and all commenting on it. I had to say the amount of mine. He's a kind of Facebook. He works for Facebook and he goes, and I said, that in Angry Warriors, that's spammy. He goes, no, my song kind of goes viral. You just kind of, you know, everybody's seeing it. And especially if it's something free you were giving away at the end of the video, you know, people are from all over are going to comment on it. Like, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Many great memories of that, uh, definitely. And you know, it was funny. It was out the same day that we did the. Um, that's what I call Corona Christmas, because I don't even. I was that caught up with the Ulster Fry because we put out the. No, that's what I call a Corona Christmas, and it was. It went everywhere as well. It was another huge viral thing. So it was kind of like a double whammy, and I was so invested in that that yeah. when then you we messaged me, I was like, "She's loved the many hats on that. It's amazing." So. Uh, well, you, you kind of know that you've made an impact with a video or any creative content is when it's on a WhatsApp group. Because I've seen uh, your just one on a WhatsApp group. My dad actually sent it to me, and I was like, "That's gear now." Actually, doing a video uh, on that. So, well, you know, the, 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 the Pat Ramsey one was like, as I said already, like you know, I, th I thought it was going to get some engagement, but I didn't realize it was going to go boom. Uh, and then when, when, when I finished editing it and I put it together, I was like, "Oh my god, that is that is actually going to do quite well." Because I remember me and you were saying, "We're like, you know what?" I'm going to give Mickey Doherty a ring. I'm going to have a shot of him at the end going off his head because it's uh, ring. As soon as I finished it, I just wanted to get it out because I realised. Uh, I he's just doing that. Because the resident we says, like, we get Mickey at the end. He'd be screaming, going, ah, my phone was going off. And I, actually was rang, I actually rang Mickey and says, Mickey, uh, I'm going to have to do a video with Pat Ramsey. Can I get a wee 10-second shot of you in your house just going mad? And he's like, Chris, it's... Uh, you know, I'm working at the minute, but it's my birthday tomorrow, so I won't be available tomorrow. So I was like, I have to wait two days to get this. No, I'm going, no, no, I want this out now. <laughs> it, was it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect as it is. So that's it, Chris. It's been it's been an amazing year. Hopefully this year is going to be even um, even better for you. Um, what's the plans now moving forward? Where do you go from here now next? I have a good rig of ideas for videos and stuff, but it's so frustrating because I kind of I kind of built momentum with the like the, the full culture, the Liam Coyle and the Pat Ramsey. But now I can't do anything because of you know the uh, cool. pandemic situation. But you know what? It's just the way I look at it. It's something to look forward to. So and it's it's like everything else. It's I cannot wait to go on the concerts. I cannot wait to be DJing I know. again. I know. Yeah. And, that, so, and that's the way I kind of think of it. I kind of think positively. You know, you have this to look forward to. You know. Uh, that's it. Well, you have to, and that's it. I mean, you're and, and for the sake of our own mental health too. I mean, I um, it's. I think it can become a bit cliched when people say, "Oh, think positive, think positive." But you know, every day, try and um, try and just spend. I try and spend, you know, thirty seconds, sixty seconds, just being uh, gr grateful and going through the list of things that I'm grateful for. Um, and you know, and it's um, it's been uh, last year was a tough year. I know we've an hour tough year ahead of us, but I think your content uh, is something that people uh, look forward to. And um, you know, I um, you know, I would hope that uh, over the course of this year, I can get my comedy brain back on working again too. And you know, I think um, 
I think just the the stuff that you're doing is just fantastic. It's really, really, uh, it's next level. I mean, I, we've we spoke about that. You know, where I I had I have a, a small bits and pieces of merchandise and greetings cards was one of the things that I was looking at. But the level you're doing it at is just way beyond what I ever could have done. So I just tip my hat and say, fair play to that man. He's done such an amazing job with it. And you know, and we're really looking forward, as we say, the two of us now to moving forward. You know bringing the best of dairy to to the to the the, the pure dairy market and um and you know and seeing what comes next for very clever well, that's it i tell you i think that so far you know since may 2020 you know that's it, it, kind of i'm looking at the stats i'm looking at the analytics i'm looking at followers and i'm saying you know what the dairy people obviously like the product so and now during these lockdown times and stuff, everybody's flat out in Amazon Prime and rubbing the whole out of Netflix. So I'm thinking maybe we'll branch out. They start doing cards based on TV shows like The Office or Big Bang Theory, Friends. Um, you know, I'm thinking we'll all go down that route. So it's on. I'm thinking about it. I'm already, yeah. doing, I'm already starting to branch out a wee bit, like with the Flower Ted cards and the football cards and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, but as your audience grows, you know, you kind of have to think maybe do a bit more than just Derry and Northern Ireland, you know. Yeah, well, you've got your stuff. Your stuff's definitely good enough to do it. And uh, you, as you say, you've got the you've branched out now. Klopp, Keen, uh, Fowler, Ted. The stuff seems to be getting more general. Um, and you can you can branch out from from uh, beyond dairy. And I know uh, Billy at the Ulster Fries uh, has been very complimentary about your stuff because you've done a lot of kind of Belfast humor and all too. So it's certainly good enough to travel to you know across Northern Ireland, UK. Um, and I'm sure you're already seeing that for your sales. So. Wish you all the success with it, man. Um, and I know um, you. Know, everybody's looking with interest to see what you do next in terms of your cards and your output. But um, it's been absolutely brilliant speaking to you. Um, it's been great. Thing. We could keep talking. We could keep bla- blabbing on here, but uh, we don't want to. We don't want to rub the hole yet, as they say. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting on. The, I'm looking forward to this pure dairy market being released. And anybody watching, like guys, I was on the other day uh, uploading products to it, and it's easy. See if you're not that technical and you're worried about that side of things. Don't worry. It's very, very uh, easy to use. Great, Andrew Fish and Kieran's done a fantastic job. So well done, Kieran, for that. A lot of work to do. It'll not be, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll you know, it will not be at the at the level of Amazon in terms of features. Obviously, we haven't got Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, infinite uh, supply of money, but it'll be good. It'll be functional. There'll be lots of options, lots of products on there, um, and it'll give people an option to, to shop local and support local. Uh, because I think we've said that, Chris. You know, it's always been uh, the shopping local. The people love the idea of shopping local more than actually the practicality. The practicalities of shopping local has been really, really tough because you have to know all these different websites or you have to just, you know, get in your car and go up a town. And at the moment, that's that's not really a thing. So, so yeah, really excited to, to move forward with that. Um, and, you know, we'll just see what, where it takes us uh, over the course of the next next year or so. Um, but, yeah, totally um, looking forward to collaborating with you, hopefully on videos, cards, anything else moving forward in the future, Chris. Of course, for sure. We'll talk off air about a couple of wee video ideas about it. So, I don't know on here a few more swear words <laughs> well that's it chris listen thanks for thanks for speaking to me thanks for being our first guest on pure dairy talks we'll be back uh next week we've lined up a couple more guests the wonderful and legendary pat ramsey has also going to do um come on and speak this as well on his own so that's it chris thanks for your time thanks for coming on speaking this and uh have a happy new year buddy and i'll speak to you soon mucker thank you very much kieran thanks for having me and stay safe stay safe buddy all right see you soon Bye.